Hello Nasita School community, this is Tanya Kielowski and I am live in the school building today um, for our Facebook message live session. And uh, for those of you who are first joining us and maybe have not been live in a live session with us, uh, I'm just going to go through really quickly a little bit about the session and how you may uh, tune in and engage if you uh, would like to do that. So as part of the um, process with Facebook Live, if you are interested in making any um, comments or asking any questions, you can certainly go into the comment section and add a comment and then I will periodically, um, well today at the end of the um, presentation I provide, I will check uh, my uh, laptop and make sure if anything uh, came through and certainly address any questions or any comments that you might have. So if you see the message uh, after the fact and you have any questions or comments, you can certainly reach out to me in person and I am happy to answer uh, anything that you have or address any concerns you have. So uh, today's Facebook Live session is um, to help uh, educate uh, my school community in terms of the advocacy role that I play uh, at the state level and really helping to um, frame up our story in our community and why our um, funding formula uh, for us in the Cedar School community is broken. So uh, this past Monday, uh, April 23rd, I visited Oshkosh and uh, was part of their hearing and shared some testimony uh, regarding our school funding formula and the impact of that formula in our school community and on our finance uh, challenges. And so uh, today what I want to do is uh, share with you my message to them um, and the testimony I provided in order to again just help educate um, our community on the things that I see as challenges and why uh, we need a solution um, to uh, some of our finance issues other than referendum. And so um, that's what I'm going to provide you today. So uh, bear with me as I uh, share our story that I shared with our uh, senators this past um, Monday, April 23rd. So uh, here we go. My name is Tanya Kitlowski, and I am the superintendent in the Ceda Area School District, residing in the 17th Senate District. Nasita is a small rural community serving 700 total 4K through 12th grade students. Our community is comprised of approximately 42% of our population as 45 years of age or older, with 16% of that population as 65 years or older. With an aging population, we have many citizens in our community on a fixed income. To create greater financial complexity, over 50% of our student population receives free and reduced lunch, so this percentage of our population also experiences some level of financial difficulty. We are also a negative tertiary aided school district, primarily based on our decrease in enrollment and increase in property wealth. This information becomes important in how schools are funded as Nasita is also home to Castle Rock Lake, the fourth largest lake in the state of Wisconsin. With this natural resource, Nasita's property wealth does not depict the economy of our small rural community, specifically those on a fixed income or those living in poverty. Yet property wealth plays a significant factor in our local taxpayer's burden. As a matter of fact, we just passed an operational referendum on April 3rd, coming off a failed operational referendum last spring. Our community voted not only for the children in our community, but also the economic viability of our school community. Our community recognizes the correlation between the quality of public school and community prosperity. The revenue caps imposed on our school creates an additional challenge for Nasita. Our school district was a fairly conservative spending district when the revenue cap was put into place and we consistently maintain fiscal conservativeness. Our current per pupil cost is $9,589 per student, which places us in the lower 50th percentile in our state. Yet our cost for educating students continues to rise, especially given the socioeconomic needs of children from a high poverty school district. In addition, our special education needs continue to rise, with almost 20% of our current population receiving special education services. 
Our general fund transfer line this past year was over $1 million and our overall district budget of $8,500,000. Our current district expenditures are almost identical to that of 2012-13 and we are currently only 25 students less than that fiscal enrollment year. With D3 student enrollment over the past five years across the span of all 13 grade levels, we are unable to realize significant cost savings without impacting the quality of education we offer our community's children. Also complicating matters is the fact that we are experiencing increased costs to do some of the important work in our world of educating our children. The increased costs have come not only as a cost of living expense, but also increasing mental health needs. We have too many young lives impacted by childhood trauma, which is more prevalent in small rural communities of poverty, where our wraparound services are minimal to none. We need to begin to support the increased financial needs of our rural schools to address the mental health needs of our rural children. Our local small rural communities do not have these resources for children or families, so our schools must step up to serve these increasing needs. Lastly, I am very supportive of total public transparency around ensuring our community sees a return on their investments from their schools. Primarily, this return is seen in achievement data related to our state report card. I caution us, however, in how we use this information. As Nasita Middle School, High School, and our collective district report card were considered unreliable this past fall. With a low student count, along with high percentage of free and reduced students, we have a high level of volatility, which in turn creates unreliable data. Our middle school, high school report card shifted by 13.6 points this past fall. The fluctuation on this school report card was so significant that the Department of Public Instruction notes that significant change by placing a carrot next to the accountability rating. This notation suggests it is unclear if the score change accurately reflects an actual change in student performance. I would argue it certainly does not. Yet our community views this data as a lack of return on their investment, understandably. Until we can remove this level of statistical volatility on our state report card, should we ever use this data to communicate with our communities whether or not they are getting a positive return on their investment. In summary, I am concerned about our broken funding formula in terms of how property wealth impacts the formula, but our demographics of a small rural community do not represent that of that property wealth. I am concerned about the increasing costs of educating a child with a revenue cap that forces us to choose between academic priorities and social emotional priorities, both of which are equally important. Our children deserve to have access to both. Lastly, I continue to be concerned about how we are moving to connect our state report card with our school finance system. Although I support this transparency, until we fix the statistical volatility of our current report card, should we make this connection between student achievement and a return on a taxpayer's investment. This notation and this notion of cause effect would be detrimental to ensuring we are building community trust when in fact the correlation is unreliable and Department of Public Instruction has noted that. Thank you for allowing me to share my concerns around school finance. I love our state and I more love my community. Our children deserve, regardless of their zip code, the very best public education in our nation. I am counting on our legislators to help to address our funding barriers. So my children and my community get the same advantages of other schools in our state. I am happy to support the school finance work in our state in any way possible. Thank you for your time.
Soul School community, that is, um, in general, my message to our senators. Uh, I will continue to consider um, attending one more uh, state budget hearing. I can tell you that after I presented, I was not uh, an invited speaker, so I signed up to provide testimony as um, part of the public testimony option. But um, I did reach out to see if I could share um, increased data with our legislators at um, the last public hearing uh, coming up in Madison. So um, I am working as hard as I can to try to advocate for us, knowing that we need some solutions uh, beyond those types of solutions that I would argue um, negatively divide a community, um, such as that when you have a referendum on the ballot. I do not think that's a sustainable solution um, for us or for any community uh, because understandably you have people um, on both sides of the argument supporting or not and uh, I don't think it's fair for our children to have um, a community that is forced to make that type of decision and I certainly don't think it's fair for our community members um, to have to be a part of that type of um, negative divisive behavior that happens when uh, people are forced to make uh, really difficult decisions for themselves uh, or their family. So I'm just going to quickly um, pop over to my computer and just see if there are any questions people have. Um, certainly, I am more than happy to take any questions at any time. Uh, it is very important to me to um, continue to help educate our community around some of the challenges. Um, and most of our challenges right now are well beyond um, the direct uh, fiscal management of our district. So I, um, I want to make sure I help to educate. Uh, we certainly as a district have an extreme responsibility uh, to make sure that our community has a return on their investment and I will work tirelessly to ensure that. But um, there are also larger issues that impact our financial instability that um, are beyond that of the fiscal management within our school district. And I want to continue to advocate for us and um, see what I can do to positively influence some changes that will, uh, will help our uh, school community and our, our taxpayers and certainly our, uh, our, our community's children. So uh, I don't see any questions. So that is the information I wanted to share with you today. Next Facebook Live session, I will be preparing information, some data, um, and some finance um, data as well um, regarding uh, the various uh, special education and mental health needs that we're seeing in our district to help build some knowledge base about what we're seeing and why and how we're addressing that and uh, possible solutions that we have uh, moving forward uh, to better meet the needs of our kids. So that's it, everybody. I don't see any questions. So thank you for having me this afternoon and for joining me. And everybody have a great rest of the day. Thank you.